Ladies and gentlemen, hello again. Welcome to another Reflected Reality Simulations video. My name's Graham, this is X-Plane 11 and the Flight Factor A320. It's part four of the video series. We're looking at an RNAV approach today. Hopefully you've seen the first three videos in the series where we've looked at basically an entire flight, including some variations on how to fly the approach. But so far we've only used the ILS approach. So today the RNAV is slightly different. We don't need to look at the full uh, en route descent management, so we'll start the aircraft here. We're paused at 4,000 feet, heading towards uh, Chalon airfield, just to the east of Paris. This is the approach chart. We're routing towards uh, a waypoint here called Vaxed at the moment, coming in uh, from the northwest. We're going to fly around the procedure, then towards the final approach fix, and then pick up the final descent towards the runway. The final approach fix is the kind of critical point we want to build this back from. At only 2,500 feet uh, above sea level, with a field elevation of 600 feet, that's only 1,900 feet above airfield elevation, 5.9 miles out. So I don't want to be there very fast at all. I want to be less than 160 knots with uh, at least flap 2 selected. And what we're going to do is we're going to work the profile back from there. The aircraft's going to suggest a, a VNAV profile. And whilst we're considering that, this is probably the hardest thing for the developers to get right on this model. It's not quite there at the moment, but it's also the hardest thing for the aircraft itself to, to do. Um, the Airbus documentation is very good at telling pilots how to operate the aircraft. It doesn't go into much detail about how the aircraft computes some of the flight profiles. So rather than having a de definitive reference source available, you end up having to make the model work uh, in a similar manner to how you observe the aircraft operating, and that can make it slightly uh, more challenging for the developers. So the model is not perfect, but the real aircraft isn't perfect in this kind of regime as well. Working back from this final approach fix then, 2,500 feet, 160 knots. We've got a four mile run in there, five miles on the base leg and then 14 miles down. If I was to use managed descent, it would take me from this uh, 4,000 feet altitude here, gradually down to 3,500 feet here, and then it will stick the nose down, descend all the way down to 3,500 feet, and then fly level for that four miles towards the final approach fix. That's really not how I want to fly the aircraft at all. I'd rather have a gradual descent, keeping the aircraft a little bit higher for longer. So because I've got a slightly higher altitude, I need to bring the speed back a little bit. You can trade altitude for speed quite easily. If I'm going to be 2,500 feet by this final approach fix, and I've got 4 miles to run, well, I know that 3 miles and 1,000 feet is a fairly sensible 3 degree glide slope. So 4 miles is good enough. Let's add on 1,000 feet to the fix here, from 2,500 feet up to 3,500 feet. We're going to try and extend this profile a little bit. That gives me the start of three degrees around about the 406 point here. I want to be at least flap two and speed 180 knots at that point. So maximum of 210, that's fine. I'll be 180 uh, or around about there. Around about 3,500 feet, that's in the window here as well. And I'm already at 4,000 feet. So that's me basically complied with both these constraints as well. So we'll fly the aircraft. We'll have a look at what the aircraft's set up to do. And then we'll uh, configure the aircraft for the approach. Before we take the pause off, a very quick look at how the aircraft is configured just now. So we're routing towards uh, VACSED at the moment. It's computed the top of descent at VACSED. The aircraft's planning on getting to that 406 point at 2600 feet, then flying level for four miles, more or less. And that's what we're going to intervene and make it behave slightly differently for. Let's take the pause off and we'll fly the aircraft. I'll bring up the uh, PFD here so I've got something to look at. Now because I'm going to fly a slightly different vertical and speed profile, there's not much point in leaving the aircraft in a managed speed mode. The decel point here it's computed is really for the aircraft flying its profile. So I'll select the speed, go to perf and activate the approach. So basically I've got 250 knots in the window at the moment. As soon as I manage the speed by pushing the button in, it'll come back to the final approach speed or the configuration speed. So we've worked out we want to be 3,500 feet with the speed back around about the uh, turn on to final here. 
I've got five miles cross track. That's enough to lose 500 feet easily, but I've also got about 60 knots to come off as well. So what I'll do is, as we're approaching the 404 point, maybe three miles before, I'll manage the speed. And then I'll slide 500 feet per minute down. We've got 500 feet to lose here. I'll be travelling at a speed of around about four miles per minute. So that should work out perfectly. I'll be down 500 feet in a minute and I'll cover four miles. It should all work out. Most importantly, I'll be within the 4,000, 3,500 uh, limit and above 2,500. So I'm sorry this video is a couple of days late. I've not been feeling very well recently. I've had a couple of days off work. Uh, I picked up one of these uh, late uh, winter, early spring colds. So I'm a, bit, a little bit sniffly at the moment. I hope it's not affecting the uh, audio quality too much. For the RNAV approach, we're going to leave the landing system turned off. If the aircraft was uh, a new aircraft like the A350, it may have something called uh, FLS or FMS landing system, where it will display the same indications as you would have on a glide slope, uh, on an ILS, sorry, for the non-precision approach, but we're not fitted with that on the Airbus uh, 320. So all we've got is the VDEV indication here. There's no uh, lateral deviation at the moment as the flight software is implemented. Also, there's various different uh, revisions to the Airbus software. This aircraft's representing quite an old version of the FMS and quite an old version of the flight control system. So it will disconnect the autopilot automatically as you descend below MDA. The later aircraft and more modified aircraft don't exhibit that behaviour. They'll flash a message saying disconnect the autopilot for landing. But this one will actually force the autopilot to disconnect. It's very difficult um, to understand exactly what features any uh, Airbus has without going into the manuals in great detail. Lots of different software fixes over the 30 years of the aircraft's life. So I don't really want to have to worry about the speed, I want to fly the vertical profile. You can see the VDEV's dropping off here, because this uh, is still stuck looking at the uh, profile it was going to fly. Speed's managed, you see it's indicating 133, but in actual fact it's going to come back to green dot at the moment. Now, practically speaking, once the aircraft's at green dot, uh, you can more or less dispense with worrying about the speed. It's easy enough to get the aircraft uh, at any normal weights. It's easy enough to get the aircraft under the flap limiting speed. Normal max landing weight for a 320 is around about 64.5 tonnes. So we're quite far under that at the moment. The green dot's only 200 knots. But even if green dot was around about uh, 210, it wouldn't be an issue. And remember, we're doing all this single pilot, and one of the easiest ways to make capacity for yourself is to slow everything down. So you'll see in some of the videos, I fly the aircraft a little bit slower than I'd fly the, air, uh, the uh, real aircraft in real life. That's simply because you've got the limitations of the uh, keyboard and mouse interface, you've got the limitations of single pilot, and uh, just it's a little bit harder to get everything right in the sim. So just make yourself the time and slow it down. So speed's back, green dot, I'm going to select in the window, uh, altitude window here, 2500 and get ready to go down at uh, 500 feet a minute, there we go, so VS minus 500, out blue, 2500. I'll select flap 1 and it's going to change from flying green dot, come back to S speed. 500 feet a minute is a good rule of thumb. Uh, if the aircraft's flying at 500 feet per minute descent or less, then it will decelerate on the approach as well. Much greater than 500 feet a minute, and it will kind of maintain the speed it's got without any extra drag out. Once it's got flap two, it'll obviously decelerate down a three degree profile.
Now, depending on the FMS uh, software as well, the aircraft would normally be able to intercept uh, the vertical profile extended out to the 406 point here. By the way it's coded on this aircraft, uh, this model, it's got that uh, fly level segment. I don't really know whether that's a nav data issue or whether it's the version of the flight software that Flight Factor have implemented, but it's not the end of the world. So I said I wanted to be 3,500 feet or below. That's working out quite nicely by the uh, Oscar Kilo 406 point. Obviously I can click the track FPA button here and it shows my FPA as uh, one and a half degrees. Once I get around the corner, I really want to fly uh, closer to a three degree profile. See we're on track FPA, the flight director changes as well. It's not very easy to fly it manually uh, on this flight director, but it's, uh, it's easier to get the track FPA change out of the way. We're going to use track FPA and that gives us a little birdie symbol for the final approach. So coming around to, uh, onto final, what I'm going to do is select uh, flap 2 and I'll bring the speed back just to 160. I'll hold it at 160 for the time being. So 160 selected. And I'll go back on to probably about 2.5 degrees. Remember, I just want to be level at uh, 2,500 feet before the 408 point here. In fact, let's go for 3 degrees. The effect of taking flap 2 is to balloon that slightly. So I've got 500 feet to lose in 2 miles. Remember, a 3 degree profile is about 300 feet per mile. So that should all work out. As we're coming down here, I'll select the approach. Only a single autopilot in this case. It's gone to App Nav and Final Blue. Don't worry about this too steep path, that's a, a sim uh, issue at the moment. I'll try and spend some time going through this and putting a few more bug reports in. But as I said, it's very difficult to uh, describe exactly how the real thing behaves because we don't treat flying a real aircraft as a science experiment. I'll get rid of the FMS at the moment. Point four, there we go, it's gone to Alt, Captured Alt, and then Final App. So more or less continuous descent. We'll set the missed approach as 2,500 feet. I'll remanage the speed. We've got some check heights we can use here on the way down. So five miles, 2230. So five miles, 160 knots, we'll put the gear down. Arm the speed brake. Looks to be on profile. Our next check is 4 miles 1910. Select flap 3. And flap full. So distance is up here at the runway. 4 miles. Round about there. See the VDEV is still giving us a sensible indication. Speed's coming back to final approach. And obviously there's no lateral deviation. We can see the lateral deviation on the uh, nav display here, but there's nothing indicating on the PFD. So we'll let the aircraft follow the profile down. Depending on where the missed approach point is, we should have a VDEV all the way to the missed approach point. In this case, it's coincident with the runway. What I need to do, though, is if I'm not following the flight directors, I need to turn the flight directors off. And it's easy to forget when we're in FPA mode that those are still flight directors. Those arrows here are still flight directors. The reason we turn the flight directors off is to make sure the auto thrust is operating in the correct mode for us. Without the flight directors, there's no interplay between the uh, pitch and the thrust setting. Approaching two, eight. That makes sense. I'll take the autopilot out. Flight director's off. Make sure that we've got the inbound track 281. That gives us the blue line here. And I'll just adjust the uh, pitch and keep flying the aircraft. Just looking for the white uh, two and a half indicator just inside the uh, green circle there. That's roughly where we want to be. The VDEV should be uh, more or less sensible, but our primary reference is flying the aircraft visually. Don't want to get too high, looking a touch high, just correct that slightly. And then back to the datum point here. You see the lag in the uh, flight path vector makes it quite difficult to fly it in that manner. Okay. 
50, 40, 30, 20, retard, 10, 5. Spoilers. Rev green and diesel. It's quite far down the runway we're going here, so I'll take the auto brake off, just a little bit of brake pressure. Auto brakes are off now, and we'll just roll towards the vacating point. Reverse idle is enough. We always try and use the uh, minimal amount of braking uh, to keep the brake times low, to keep the brake wear low. But usually reverse idle is all that you need. The Airbus has got really good brakes if you do need them. Still got reverse thrust selected. I can keep that all the way down to taxi speed. Here's the taxiway now. A little bit more brake pressure. Below 30 knots, slight forward idle. Turn to vacate. As we vacate and it's on the center line, landing lights off, strobe lights off, store the spoilers, and then we'd start uh, doing the pilot monitoring stuff. But we've already seen that in the previous videos, so there's no need to go through that again. What we'll do is bring the aircraft to the halt. Have a look outside. I'll just move it away and make it a little bit quieter. And I'll bring up that approach chart one more time. So rather than flying the vertical profile the aircraft computed, which is uh, descending shallow down this uh, leg here, and then a steep descent, and then a flat... Uh, uh, you know, level flight towards the final approach fix. We tried to do a continuous descent. We did that by bringing the speed back a little bit earlier and then descending slightly steeper. We worked out that rather than flying this level leg here, we wanted to extend the three degree profile back towards this 406 point. We realized that that's uh, four miles. Three miles is a good guess for a thousand feet. So we went from two and a half thousand feet up to three and a half thousand feet with a little bit of a fudge for the extra mile there. We made sure that we were back at 180 knots before turning on to the final approach fix, uh, before turning on to the final approach track, sorry, here. 180, around the corner. And we had flap 2 selected to help us decelerate down that approach. We had the approach phase active early on with 250 knots selected, and we didn't use the landing system for the RNAV approach. I mentioned that it's important to turn the flight directors off on the uh, RNAV as well because you don't know what guidance the flight director is going to give you at lower levels. Uh, the uh, RNAV approach being non-precision, uh, you only use the flight directors as far as the minimums typically. Airbus are working on it. I believe that you are shortly going to be able to use the flight directors as long as there's sensible guidance uh, provided by them. But in simple terms, if you're not using the flight directors, turn them off. If you get any questions about the video uh, or you want to see anything again, I'm going to be looking at a non-precision approach using uh, track FPA uh, and not using the FMC to fly the approach. We'll fly it solely based on the uh, radio instruments in the next approach. Hopefully that will be around about uh, Wednesday next week. As always, if you have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it uh, at least slightly informative. And thanks very much for listening to me. I really do appreciate it. Thanks.